I want to meet Dominica's grandmother. She sounds like a riot. They did look so right, eh? Mom, you're on the microphone. Oh, shit. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Taste of Reality. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me, and welcome to the new crew. You know, I haven't taken the time to really, like, introduce myself to the new people of Australia. Hello. My name is Yelaine. I'm glad you found my channel, and I'm glad you are here. Um, yeah, that's it. Just wanted to say hi. Anyways. Uh, I don't know why I'm getting awkward. This is my channel. Like what? Um, as always, before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and let's get into these homestays. So we're going to start with Dominica and Jack. The, um, family stays on a farm. So she brought her, and I'm unsure, does she, she doesn't live with them, right? Because it seemed like she had her own quarters, but I don't know that she lives with them full time. I don't know. I don't remember. But anyways, the whole family is just a little bit cautious of the situation because she has been married before and it wasn't successful, obviously. It also was a short marriage. So they're just weary of, you know, was this too soon? Is he the one? What's the risk level here? This, this is the second time for her, so, so I'm yeah. a bit worried about her, so. Yeah, so. of course. I know that that's a really big pain point for Dom as well, like, mm. of course. Oh, um, we're still getting over it, see? Absolutely you are. So now we're a bit caution. Second one now she's going yeah. into now. I said, yeah. well, what, what are you doing, Dominica? You know? <laughs> are you sure? He was able to win the family over, and even Dominica was um, very eloquent with the, the, the conversation with her mother and her grandmother, just saying, listen, I understand the risk that I'm taking. And to be honest with you, Jack is the type of person who I would want to risk it with. He's a good man. He's good to me. I'm really invested in this process. And listen, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but it'll be worthwhile having experienced him. And I agree. I feel like Jack is a stellar partner, to be honest. His parents joined for lunch. And even though apparently Northern and Southern Italians typically don't get along, they were doing very well at the dinner. They're very supportive of the family. They're supportive of the couple. It, it seems like they hit it off. We've done so much, I guess, as, as a couple and, and, and in our relationship already. And Jack has always had my back and always has you know, been there to like care for me. And that's really special. We're so close to the end. And it's like, we're gonna go into the big bad world. I wanna have these tough conversations that we're having to try and get to the crux of how I'm feeling and how he ultimately feels about me too. Later in episode, oh, I didn't even say that this is episode 26 and 27. Well, whatever. Um, you could tell by the title. In episode 27, they go to Jack's apartment. And is it just me? Or is Jack the most established guy out of the guys we have left in the experiment? Because he's the only one who doesn't have a roommate. If I'm not mistaken, he lives in a home, like an actual house. Um, he does have the snake, which... Oh, yeah, not a, not a fan of snakes myself. But yeah, I'm looking at Jack like, yo, Dominica, don't mess this up. <laughs> because Jack seems like one of the best picks out of what we got left in this experiment. So don't waste a good opportunity. Moving on to Olivia and Jackson. They have drinks with his friends. And at first, the friends are like, wow, we love Olivia. She's so sweet. Look at the eye contact. Look at the physical touch. This is amazing. And then Olivia opens her mouth. And they're quickly like, oh. Oh, no. So I was like saying snide comments that sounded like to Jackson uh, just that to I was make trying to bait her. Yeah, it sounded like she was looking for a fight. Believe me, if I was trying to pick a fight with her, I'd be a little bit more articulate than past the cyanide. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a petty bitch, dead set. Why would you bring up the stupid pettiness at the retreat? The stupid story about the poo drop? Why? Why? I said in the last review, she has a very juvenile um, demeanor, very childlike behavior, and it's being exemplified in this episode. So they, the two of them, Olivia and Jackson, are really starting to see that they have a very different lifestyle to one another, where Olivia is not really that health conscious, <laughs> ironically enough. 
<laughs> and Jackson is like a gym buff, and that's actually his escape. Looks like a heart attack in a pot. Can you stop? That's really mean. Last time I'd help you cook scrambled eggs, mate. I'd rather have a tea party with Dom than do this, honestly. Could it be finished now? <laughs> so here's my thing with Olivia's attitude at the gym. I'm not a gym rat either. If you could tell. <laughs> If you couldn't tell, I'm not a gym rat either. However, when I'm at the gym, rarely, I'm at least a good sport. And when you have a partner who's saying, listen, not only is this my passion, this is actually the way that I decompress. This is a part of my daily routine that makes me who I am. You can at least be a good sport about it. And her attitude was stank. Her words were unnecessary. She could at least fake the funk and just been like, babe, just so you know, I'm doing this to show you support, but I will not be back here. I will not be back here. I guess I understand where she's coming from saying that, you know, it's reminding her of the past when she was severely overweight or just overweight. I forget the words that she used, but you could, you could have smiled and waved and then never go back. I just felt like that was unnecessary. So they meet up with his other friends again, and she's still going on about the gym life. And now she's adding on the fact that his career is going to take her away from him, take him away from her. Mm -hmm. And she's like, well, he needs to grow up. He's married now. I signed on for a husband, a full-time husband, not two days a week. He's married. He's got to grow up and stop doing that sort of shit. The man can't have a life? At the gym, she made a remark saying like, I'm your world now. And he's like, no, 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 <laughs> this is still my world. And it's like, yeah, girl, he can make accommodations for you, but he's not going to completely cut off his entire life to appease you. That's not marriage. That's not what compromise is. I don't know who brought this girl onto the experiment, but I'm about ready for her to leave. Up next, we have Tamara and Brent who have established that a romance is probably not going to be their future, but they're going to give it a good try, at least as friends. So they arrive at Brent's studio apartment. <laughs> I thought it was cute for a studio apartment, to be honest with you. And also taking in the fact that he was very, very, very badly impacted by COVID, I would have been a little bit more tender, but you know, Tamara, with her little, you know, feisty banter, she's quick to criticize. I live in a four bedroom house. This place is de very different to my place on the Gold Coast. Why do you have um, black stuff all around there? Just never took it off. Why do you only have two pillows? Um, I don't know. I don't need more. You don't even like need a bed and a couch. You could have just had this couch bed thing. At least for her, or for him, I don't know who it's a benefit for. He likes when she's a little jokey jokey with him and I'm like, okay, if you like it, I love it. But the way that Tamara has been lately, I, f I was fearing that Brent was going to not deal with her jabs well, but he did. He did a very good job. Later on, they visit his family and um, they basically were saying, listen, bickering is normal in a marriage. There's never gonna be a time where you're 1000% on the same page all the time with your spouse. That's just not how life works. But take some space, you know, back up, um, release the pressure, just work on a friendship because at the end of the day, a friendship is gonna sustain a relationship. And so that's what they've been doing. They further implored, impl Im implore, right? You know, I've been trying to put my education to use and sometimes I'm like, you know what, girl, just go to the <laughs> go to the basic grade five glossary words. Anyways, they really implement the lessons that they learned from the experts and the parents. And they took some time to go to the beach, apologize to one another, really just say, like, listen, at the end of the day, like things are copacetic. We don't have to leave on bad terms. And they end their homestays with uh, a little trip to take drinks. Listen, I'm going to put my glass up to you because that was... And not a bad effort. And we're still alive. We haven't killed each other. We're still standing. Like, yeah. that's massive. Talk. All right, moving on to Selena and Cody. Mm. <laughs> Cody. So did Cody willingly sign up for this process? Because the more we get into his story, I'm like, I don't think it would have worked with anyone, to be honest. But let's let's get into it a little bit. Cody's roommate is uh 
prepping the apartment for Selena's arrival, but clearly it was a setup. <laughs> <laughs> Cody's not the romantic type, so I've decided to um, help him out a little bit. Beyond the uh, Batman sheets and the weird coochie watermelon painting, the apartment is very bare, which is typical with guys. I mean, my apartment is bare too. You could probably hear the echo. There's not much going on here. But like, it's also very dirty and there's like old food and like it's, it's just, it's not a good look. I think this was the next day. Um, Selena is preparing to meet the parents. So she buys flowers for the mom and she's trying to write a card. And the whole time, Cody is just giving her a hard time. And she's like, I'm just trying to be nice. Like I'm, this is my first time meeting them in person. I'm trying to make a good impression. And he's kind of throwing salt in the whole situation. Look, honestly, the flowers were enough as it was. Like, I don't think you need to say too much. What would you say to someone you've never met? You've just got them an enormous bunch of flowers, which is already generous enough. I honestly wouldn't know what to say in that situation. <laughs> His saltiness permeated into the dinner as well. Like, he was just very standoffish. He even made a comment before the dinner and said that he doesn't spend more than two hours with his mom and even like a two hour dinner is enough to sustain him for like two months. And I get it, you know, some families are estranged or just not as, you know, I wanted to say friendly, but can you say friendly when you're referring to family? Not as loving as everyone's family, which I understand. However, like, I don't know, I felt like he was borderline rude. Just the things that he was saying, she's trying to get to know more about you. And he's like, no baby pictures. Um, he's just very closed off at the dinner. And he does acknowledge it. And he attributes it to the fact that losing his father very young um, caused a rift between him and his mom. And not only did it do that, it made him closed off personally just to anyone, right? So when you add being closed off, not having properly processed the death of his father, and then having an estranged relationship with your mom, I can get how this would be an awkward situation, but smile and wave. Smile and wave. That's all I'm saying. Learn to smile and wave, guys. Cody then really proves how much of like, how unaware he can be sometimes. So he's planning a bird watching date with um, Selena. And at first she's like taking it on in stride with these little um, camouflage costumes thing. And she's like, listen, if you're doing it, I'm doing it. Like, that's cute, whatever, let's do it. But um, unbeknownst to her, it was a prank. And then she's like, okay, uh, like, what what are we doing here? Are you taking this serious or is it just a joke for you? I'm not going unless you put it on. <laughs> nah, we're good to go. Let's do it. <laughs> <sighs> it's, a, it's beyond a joke now. Oh, guess we're not going bird watching. <laughs> I'm honestly really sympathizing with Selena. I know that she can be a lot sometimes and she could be asking for a lot. However, Cody's got to try a little bit more, not even just for Selena, but for anybody. You know what I mean? He seems to be taking things like it's just all a big joke. And unfortunately, a lot of people who come into a process like Married at First Sight, okay, maybe not a lot, maybe like a good handful because some people I still believe they're actors but a good handful of people really do sacrifice a lot of things to come into this process so for you to just be so nonchalant to be so jokey about it it's just not the time you know this is not the time it would be one thing if their relationship was purely friendship jokes this is not serious then I'd be like okay or if they already had an established relationship to where you know a person's humor is literally just that. It's just to have fun. It's just to be funny. It's not to diminish the connection you have. But because they haven't established that, I feel like this, is, this isn't this is the time. Like, don't... Anyways, moving on. They had a dinner or a lunch, I don't know, with... <laughs> Can you tell I was disconnected this episode? They were having a dinner or a lunch with... Cody's uncle and he was basically saying this is a familial trait and personally I wish I had changed my ways beforehand and I hope that Cody does before he realizes it's too late. I, I wish I'd been more open, more hugging, 
in all my relationships and felt more part of the whole thing. Cody should do the opposite to me. He should hug, kiss, grab hold of and hug tighter. I didn't. I should have done it. Well, John, he's got everything except he's a bit lonely himself. So it does put into perspective. It gives insight or, like, wisdom as to how I'm sort of acting in a relationship and how Selena might be taking it. I agree with the uncle. It's one thing to say this doesn't come naturally to me. However, I'm going to work on it for the betterment of myself, for the benefit of my family. Like, it's not only up to women to be the nurturer. Like, fathers can also be nurturers. They can be, you know, more emotional. They can be affectionate. It, it doesn't show weakness. If anything, it's like, it, it's a, like being vulnerable is the, one of the greatest ways you can exemplify love to your family. You know what I mean? So when the uncle is saying, listen, I know where you're coming from. I'm the same. More so with the things that you've gone through. However, when you're building a family, this doesn't work. You need to change your ways. And fine, if he doesn't want to do that for Selena, cool. Who cares? Going forward, though, you're going to have to be vulnerable. You're going to have to be affectionate or you're going to be in like a loveless marriage. Potentially. 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 On to Ella and Mitch. I didn't know she lived at home. Something about Ella just made me think, you know, she had her own little place. She was like a sex in the city type of girl, but she's not that girl. Hmm. That surprised me. The brother joins the family for dinner and basically he's like, y'all don't have a future. His opinion means basically everything to me. I just don't know if, I don't know. Time will tell after. Long distance doesn't work. Not, not, not in the long term. That's it. Long distance is hard. This is true. But it doesn't mean you can't make it work. Now, could you make it work off of this short relationship and a person who's been a pessimist this whole time? Potentially not. But to kind of just shoot it down completely, I'm like, damn, bro. At least give them a vote of confidence. Sheesh. Um, so they seek guidance. Well, Ella seeks guidance. Mitch followed along from a medium slash a psychic. And the entire time, Mitch was just, he just wasn't connecting. Is it a dream of yours to swim with dolphins or, or do that whale, that whale connection? Uh, no, uh, no? not okay. really. I'm also connecting through um, mechanical stuff like cars, um, fixing cars. Does that make sense for you? Not, not really. Um... Well, I'm going to use tarot today too. That's what I was guided to do. No, I'm not into the whole medium psychic thing. I, I, no. However, she did predict the ending of their relationship. So I guess she's onto something. She might be onto something, who knows? Last but not least, we have Sam and Al and Sam agreed to stay in the process for a week longer <laughs> under false pretenses. She was thinking that, you know, they're really gonna strengthen their bond as friends when uh, Al had intentions of rebuilding the romance. So he planned a snorkeling slash beach picnic date to kind of um, be reminiscent of their honeymoon. Was it the honeymoon that they had sex? No, maybe it wasn't the honeymoon. But there was a date that they had on the beach that really ignited ignited their um, sexual relationship. And so he wanted to, you know, recreate that. This is something that Al and I actually do have in common. You know, when I'm like salty and like, you know, a bit sun-kissed, makes me feel like I'm at home. It makes me feel like me. And I think that's sexy. End of the day, attraction between them is still prevalent. However, the reality is that their lives probably just don't work together. So it's sad for Al because he's saying, you know, this is the first woman he's ever really fallen for like this. He's never spent this much time with a woman before. And I get it. You're only 25, you know, and a 25 year old man. It's very unlikely you've had that many deep, true, like 
connections with people. So I feel like, you know what, take this experience, learn from it, be better from it, and show up better for the next person who you get involved with because Sam is not the one. She doesn't want to be the one. She ain't going to be the one. Stop trying to make her the one. She's not it. Okay. That's it for episode 26 and 27. There's going to be a nude photo scandal. Dominica has a OnlyFans. Hmm. Okay, Miss Dominico. Um, that's the next episode, so we're definitely going to tune in for that. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.